Hello everyone, it's Kevin, and welcome back to another tutorial. In this video, we'll be taking a look at how ChatGPT can help you with your smart contract development. GPT-4 is the latest version of OpenAI's AI language model, and that's the version that we'll be looking at today. Essentially, it's a super advanced chatbot that is way smarter than any chatbot you've ever interacted with in the past. In fact, I hesitate to call it a chatbot because it's kind of insulting to GPT-4. The official name of it is a language model, um, but you can also call it a text-based artificial intelligence. It's been trained on an enormous amount of data across the internet, so it's familiar with just about anything you can think of, including Solidity Smart Contracts. It's so capable that it can not only teach you how to write Solidity Smart Contracts, but it can also help you debug them. You can copy and paste your code into GPT-4's interface, and it can help you find errors in your code. GPT-4 is context aware, so even if it doesn't produce the right answer that you're looking for right away, you can ask it to revise its answer and you can sort of steer it or guide it towards the best solution that suits your needs. If you've never interacted with GPT-4 before, it is nothing short of a breathtaking experience. The knowledge, the reasoning, the capability, uh, its level of understanding is unbelievably good. And uh, truly, it's, it's nothing short of inspirational. And no, this introduction was not written by GPT-4, although that's certainly something that it is capable of. Now, a couple of disclaimers before we get started. GPT-4 is not infallible. It does make mistakes. Sometimes it can seemingly invent or hallucinate answers that sound reasonable, but may not be factually correct. The code that we'll be producing today with the help of GPT-4 is for demonstration purposes only and should not be used in production. Lastly, GPT-4's training data includes content up to about September 2021. So generally speaking, it cannot answer questions uh, about things that occurred after that date. And I wanna give a quick table of contents as to what we'll be looking at today. First, we'll ask ChatGPT to create an ERC-20 token for us. Then we'll ask it for hard hat deployment instructions. And we'll ask it to create some test scenarios for us. And lastly, we will give ChatGPT a known buggy contract and we'll ask it to tell us uh, what's wrong and it will explain to us uh, what's wrong and how to fix it. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. First thing you wanna do is head to chat.openai.com. And if you don't have an account, you can easily sign up for one. Otherwise you can log in. I already have an account, so I'll go ahead and log back in. And if this is your first visit, you'll be greeted with a couple of warning messages and, and reminders here from OpenAI. So we'll go ahead and continue. And the first thing to point out here is in this video, we'll be working with GPT-4, which is the latest model. And that is part of a subscription service called ChatGPT+. I believe it's $20 USD per month. Uh, but the concepts uh, pointed out in this video, they apply to all of the models. So you can use it in GPT 3.5, which is free, that's perfectly fine. However, if you have access to GPT 4, I would highly encourage that you do use it um, because it is quite a bit more advanced uh, of a model. And so uh, its understanding and its level of reasoning um, is quite a bit better. Uh, but it applies, you know, for both. So you're welcome to give uh, to give either a go. So uh, first thing I'm going to do, actually, I want to turn on dark mode. I just think that's a little bit nicer. Um, and what I'd like to start off with is I'd like to ask GPT-4 to create an ERC-20 token for us. Uh, I'd like it to be called Kev token. I'd like the symbol to be called Kev. Um, I'm going to specify an initial supply. And I would like to specify a specific account that the initial supply will be sent to. So fairly simple uh, prompt. Let's go ahead and put this into chat GPT and let's go ahead and give it a whirl. So GPT-4 is producing for us a simple ERC-20 contract using Open Zeppelin. It's naming the token Kevin with the symbol KEV, just as we asked, and it's specifying the initial supply uh, as we asked as well. Finally, it's minting the initial supply, and it also has some unprompted error checking to ensure that the initial supply is not accidentally sent to the burn address. Additionally, GPT-4 reminds us that this is a simple contract and you may wish to extend it with additional features like burning uh, or other contract logic. Um, let's go ahead and uh, kind of guide it along. We'll maybe ask some follow-up questions uh, about deployment um, and, things of, and things of that nature. 
One change that I'd like to make here is that it hard coded this address here. And I think there's a, a nicer way to do that. So let's ask it to uh, revise this to uh, take the initial uh, account here as a uh, parameter in the constructor instead. And GPT-4 is happy to make that change for us. And it doesn't just spit out the one line, um, but instead it gives us the entire contract uh, again with the changes that we requested. And it's also building in a little bit of logic here. Um, it's making sure that the initial supply uh, recipient is not uh, the zero address. And that's quite beneficial. It even includes a warning message in the event that it is. And so we're quite happy with this. Um, this is just the Solidity uh, smart contract uh, code, but ChatGPT can do much more than that. It can give us compilation instructions, deployment instructions, uh, and much more. So let's say that we'd like to use Hardhat and let's, um, let's ask for the steps kind of from beginning to end. Wow, very detailed instructions. And we're not just gonna take GPT-4's word for it. Instead, we're gonna go through and actually take these steps uh, ourselves to, uh, to kind of follow the mantra of uh, don't trust verify. Um, but this is looking very promising. And it's even advising us uh, that we shouldn't hard code our private key. Instead, we should use something like a secrets.json file. And it's giving us the exact structure of what that would look like. If you're new to smart contract development and maybe you were unsure of the formatting of the secrets.json file, maybe you didn't have an example in front of you, this is really wonderful um, that it gives you that. It's also giving us a deployment script written in JavaScript, which we can use uh, to deploy our smart contract to Moonbase Alpha. Really very, very exciting. And uh, again, we're gonna take all these steps once it's done generating. One thing that I will point out uh, GPT-4 has a limit of 500 uh, words, essentially. I think they call them tokens, but it has a, a hard limit, uh, but its train of thought actually continues. So if it abruptly shuts off, kind of in the middle of a sentence or in the middle of a word, you can just ask it to continue, and it will happily continue uh, the prior you know, train of thought that it was working on, and this will just count as a another message against uh, your limit. So. Uh, all of this is looking excellent. Again, let's uh, go through and uh, follow the exact steps that uh, that it has outlined for us. So I'm just going to adjust the windows a little bit here. Let's go ahead and uh, follow the, the setup instructions. So it's asking us to install Hardhat and it's giving us uh, instructions for where to store KevinToken.sol. So I'm going to start here and we'll go ahead and install Hardhat. Cool. I already have a directory here, so um, but I guess we'll we'll follow the instructions uh, verbatim to follow the spirit of GPT-4's instructions here. And then it says, "Go ahead and create an empty hardhat config uh, when prompted." Cool. Then we're going to install the required dependencies here. And we're gonna create a new file, and it's even specifying that we should do this inside of a folder named contracts. So that is uh, very wise to give us those instructions. So you can do that uh, in, the, uh, in the UI, or you can also uh, just run this command to create a contracts folder. Um, so let's go to our contracts folder, and let's go ahead and create kevintoken.sol. And we're gonna copy and paste the contents uh, of it verbatim. It even has the pragma statement and it correctly imports the open Zeppelin library that we'll be using uh, the ERC 20.sol contract. So let's save that. And it has the, um, uh, the correct way that we wanted, which is the address specified in the constructor. Cool. It's even telling us uh, that we should create a secrets.json. So let's, uh, let's do that. And we're going to do this in the root directory. So 
I'm going to create a quick new Ethereum address. The private key is going to be exposed, so this is only for test purposes. And let's actually copy the exact formatting here that GPT-4 recommended. Okay, let's save this. Let's save this. And because this is uh, Moonbase Alpha, we're gonna have to get some uh, faucet funds. So let's head to the Moonbase Alpha faucet and let's go ahead and fund this account. Cool, and we're all set there. And let's go ahead and work on the deploy script. To give a quick rundown of our deployment script, we use ethers and because we're deploying a contract, we need a signer. Whenever we make a state change to the blockchain when using ethers, we always need a signer. Whereas if we're just reading from the chain, we can use a provider. And a provider doesn't require a seed or private keys, so it's a bit easier to get set up. The get contract factory method indicates that we want to deploy a new smart contract, the Kevin token to be specific, and we're going to define our initial supply recipient and call our constructor. Lastly, all of this is wrapped up in a main function, and that main function is then called at the bottom of the script, and if any errors result, they will be caught and the script will stop running. So it's advising us to create a folder named scripts. So let's head in there and let's create the deploy.js script. And we can just take a minute and appreciate how convenient this is. I mean, it has all the names here, um, the names that we specified. It has the address that we specified um, that it's using as a uh, parameter here in the deployment script. It has some logging. Uh, it's really, really excellent. So we're copying that verbatim. And to this point, We've done everything that ChatGPT has advised us to do. Let's go ahead and give it a whirl and see if we can get this deployed. Cool. Uh, so there, we seemed to have missed one step. Did I? Ah, yes. I forgot to copy uh, the hardhackconfig.js. So let's take care of that now. Um, yeah, I forgot to copy the uh, the changes here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually delete the file and I'm going to copy and paste the uh, exact contents uh, as GPT-4 has specified. And we mentioned that we wanted to deploy to Moonbase Alpha and GPT-4 is knowledgeable enough to have uh, one of the public RPC URLs for Moonbase Alpha correctly listed here. So really fantastic to see. Um, and it's also requiring that we have our secrets.json uh, and our private key. It's importing. Uh, it's got the correct chain ID. Everything's correct. Everything looks correct here. So uh, uh, very pleased to see that. Let's copy and paste the contents here. Save it. And let's try the same command here. It even advises us how to get dev tokens for Moonbase Alpha. Unbelievable. Very, very exciting to see. Mm, I see, I see, I see. So rather than, uh, we can fix this ourselves. Um, and all we need to do uh, is uh, install the Open Zeppelin uh, library locally, uh, and then Hardhat uh, will be able to uh, work with it that way. But something that shows you the power of GPT-4, again, it's context aware, um, so it can remember uh, your conversation. And uh, we can actually copy and paste this error into GPT-4 and uh, it, uh, it'll give us some troubleshooting steps and most likely the correct answer uh, will be in there. So let's go ahead and give it a shot. Wonderful. Let's go ahead and give it a shot. Let's make this change. Let's 
save it. And let's go ahead and run the same command again. Oh, we're in the contracts folder, so let's head back here. Missing a license file, not a big deal. Uh, I've seen plenty of runs where uh, GPT-4 does include a license identifier. Um, in this case, it, it chose not to. Uh, it is a language model. It's not going to produce the same answer every time. And so that's something to, uh, to definitely think about. And uh, it looks like everything was deployed successfully. We can take a quick look here um, with the address of Kevin token. So we can head to moonbase.moonscan. And let's go ahead and take a quick look. And everything's deployed here. Looking great. So just a couple of things uh, to point out. Uh, GPT-4 does make mistakes sometimes. Um, you saw it with this import statement. Um, it's not gonna be the same error every time. Uh, you might try the exact same inputs and uh, it might uh, produce a, a different result, right? Um, but if you get an error, you can put that into GPT-4 and it can help you fix it. Now, in this case, the answer was pretty straightforward, right? Here's what you need to do to fix it. Here's the exact, um, the exact fix. Occasionally, you might have something where it's less clear what the uh, mistake is and less clear exactly what the answer is to fix it. And in that case, GPT-4 is amazing at giving you a whole list of troubleshooting steps. It might put out four or five different things um, that it suggests. And if none of those work, uh, you can follow up and say, hey, you know, this I tried all these things. It didn't work. You know, what should I try next? And GPT-4 will give you more things to troubleshoot. It might say, could you copy and paste your code? It might say, what does your file structure look like? It might say, have you made sure that you've installed everything? It's really smart at detecting issues and, and helping you push through um, as a developer and sort out uh, any issues that you have. It's really incredibly powerful um, in that sense. So we've learned that GPT-4 can write a Solidity smart contract for us. We've learned that it can write a deployment script uh, we've learned that it can fix errors and tell us how to solve them, and uh, it can do more. So one thing uh, that's uh, uh, very important, of course, is for any contract to have tests. And uh, you can write them yourselves. You can also have GPT-4 help you with your tests. So we'll say, hey. So GPT-4 has given us a bunch of different tests to use for our Kevin token contract. It's described how it's structured the tests and it's let us know uh, how we can go ahead and run the test suite. It's given us a reminder um, that this is a basic test suite and it may or may not match your needs. Again, all of this should be used just for testing purposes and not within production. But certainly this can be used as a really wonderful spring and, and launching point um, for expanding and writing your own tests. And even if you're not going to include um, tests that are exactly similar to these, uh, it can certainly help you uh, structure your tests, right? And give you a framework um, for what you might uh, be looking to write on your own. Uh, for the sake of time, I won't be running these tests, but I wanted to show you that it was uh, possible. All right, and lastly, before we wrap up, um, I mentioned that GPT-4 can help you spot bugs in your smart contract. So what happens if we uh, paste in a smart contract uh, which is known uh, for having uh, some particularly pesky bugs? And uh, let's see if GPT-4 uh, can recognize the issue. And the bug that we'll be asking GPT-4 to find today pertains to reentrancy. And reentrancy was actually the issue that brought down the DAO. Um, the first DAO, or the one, the first one to gain national prominence, uh, was the original DAO uh, in 2016 on Ethereum. And users could pledge or deposit their ETH tokens into the DAO, and they can vote on how they'd like to see it uh, distributed to projects, um, with the hope that those projects, you know, would succeed and it would be a uh, a good use of funds. Um, now there was a fatal flaw uh, that was very critical, and you can see this exact flaw here. For a user to withdraw their balance using the withdraw balance method, um, it used this old insecure call, which is deprecated now. Um, you should now use uh, the transfer function. Uh, but in this case, uh, the function here, 
would allow the user to withdraw their funds. Um, and it's at this point at which the value is transferred. And then the user's balance is zeroed out. Now, a user could call withdraw balance and then have a essentially a recursive call to call withdraw balance before their original balance here was zeroed out. And this would allow them to take out more than what they had put in, essentially stealing funds from the DAO. And the fix to this is to zero out the user's balance before any funds are transferred. And this is how the reentrancy bug could be prevented. This is an important history lesson. Let's see if GPT-4 can recognize what's wrong. I'm gonna copy and paste all of this minus the insecure comment at the top. GPT-4, of course, spots the issue right away. It gives you a sample code here for how to fix the issue, and it rewrites the withdraw balance here, uh, specifying that the user's balance is zeroed out uh, before any funds are transferred. Of course, this is just for demonstration purposes and should not be used in production. And we specified here a very uh, common error with reentrancy, but the point that I wanna make here is that GPT-4 is extremely uh, useful at recognizing not just straightforward errors, um, but ones where you're genuinely stumped. Uh, you could have searched Stack Overflow. Uh, you could have Google searched for uh, your potential error messages, and maybe you even tried a couple different things. But GPT-4 can send you through an advanced troubleshooting loop, again, five, six, or more steps, um, and let you know exactly uh, what you should take a look at. Um, and not just for simple errors, but for potentially more complex ones, potential deployment issues, uh, configuration issues, setup, and really GPT-4 can remove blockers um, and help you move on uh, to what you wanna do, which is to build and deploy your DAP. Remember that GPT-4 is not perfect. It does make mistakes. And the mistakes that it makes can be very convincing. It won't tell you that it's wrong. It will tell you very convincingly uh, an answer that could be wrong. So just something to be aware of and watch out for. So uh, there's more to come. We are for sure going to have another GPT-4 video. This was just a quick introduction uh, to showing you a few things that it can do um, and help you with your Solidity smart contract development and your deployments to Moonbeam. Thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank <laughs> you.